Every second of every day there are wars going on all around the world and it's the responsibility of photographers and journalists to not let the rest of us forget about that. We will not falter and we will not fail. So what was your first experience of war? So that was in Somalia. And I remember the plane circling over Mogadishu. And I was by myself and I was 22. And just suddenly thinking, oh my God, what have I done? What am I doing? And we got into this land cruiser and everywhere there were dead bodies. I, I was blown away by this. You know, I just thought, how can this be happening? You know what war looks like. Everyone knows what war looks like. But it's, there's a difference between what war looks like and what war feels like. You know, it's the heat and it's the stench and it's the dirtiness and it's the, you know, the, the sound of it. And to be a great photographer, you, you, you do it at the expense of everything. Yeah, of course. So, like, what's the story which stands out to you which affected you the most? So there was this one story we did in Pakistan which focused on a nine-year-old Christian girl who had been gang-raped by Muslim men. And the, her father went to them and he confronted them and there'd been a murder that had happened like two or three weeks previously. The guy who was one of the rapists basically went to the police um, and he said, oh, I know who did, who was the murderer. It was the father. So it was a complete lie. The father had nothing to do with this murder. But because the rapist was sort of a well-respected Muslim, the police arrested the father. So I photographed the daughter. You know, I'm looking in this girl's eyes and I'm just thinking, what the hell has she been through? You know? and, and then we went in to this prison and we met the father. And the human rights lawyers are talking to the father. And as they're talking, this tear just rolls down his face. However, the police are really fucked off that we're there. And because I'm so pregnant, I became a target and they started punching me in the stomach. I think you realize quite how barbaric people can be. I mean, you know, in Sierra Leone, one of the things that they did the most was they cut women's arms off so that they couldn't hold their children. So I was sent to Kosovo to do a story about rape and Part of the story focused on this factory called Electromaturi. The Serbs had held 200 Albanian women in that factory and they had systematically raped them. The Serbs used to make the women comb their hair before they raped them, so in the market there were hundreds of combs. As a female photographer, it was incredibly painful to be in these places where such atrocities had happened. Because I couldn't see what it was I was photographing, I had to kind of put myself into the situation. Because you know, the thing with a camera is also that it's a physical barrier. So actually, in the worst situations, a camera kind of helps. So what about some of the women that you met whilst you were in Afghanistan doing your stories there? Well, there was one woman called Zarguna who had a job in a university and overnight the Taliban came into Kabul and they went on the radio and they said, you know, women, you've got to stay at home. In the morning, she got up, she went to work and on the way to work, she was stopped by some Taliban and they said, you know, you're not ever going to work again and if you come back here, we'll break your legs. And she was living in a room in her brother's house and she had no real way to survive and she was terribly depressed and I think it's easy to overlook the kinds of mental damage that conflict does to people. And then when I went back four years later, I found her again and she had cancer and she was dying. And you just thought, Jesus, she's, you know, lived through all of this terrible shit. She now can work, but she's dying. It was really like heartbroken. Was there anyone who you knew who like in the end died trying to go to these places to help? So on our second trip, we gave a ride to a girl called Marla, who was from California. We called her Bubbles. And she set up a charity and was then killed at the age of 29 in a car bomb. Today, that American humanitarian worker was one of three people killed in a car bomb attack on a convoy traveling near Baghdad's airport. But the thing is, when I had you and Jackson, I loved you guys more than anything. So I had to make the decision to stop going to wars. And I promised you guys that I would stop. 